All right, guys. Uh, hopefully this one works. Uh, let me know if I have sound. If you can hear me, just give me some thumbs up. Say something in the comment box. Uh, I've tried on here two or three times already. So please let me know if you can hear me. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and roll, man. You guys watch it later. If it's got sound, if not, I'll delete the other videos. Hopefully this one's got sound. But anyway, I just want to talk about uh, standing your ground with your customers. Because they'll try to run right over you. And even without them trying to run over you, you know, in the beginning, you, you know, when you're small, it's easy for you to, you know, to run over yourself and you lowball yourself, not knowing what you're worth. I mean, you know what you're worth, but for some reason, for some reason, you're afraid of, uh, can you guys hear me? Good, good. For some reason, you're afraid of, uh, letting the client know what you'll charge him you know I, I, I listen to a lot of Keith Kelfis and uh, he touches on that subject a lot and you know he said something that really stuck to me and really changed the way that I that I communicated with my customers and how I did things good job good I'm glad I had to restart everything and start over my kids were messing with the laptop last night and no telling what they did he was trying to get me a microphone hooked up uh, so we had some some issues with that but um, I'm glad you guys can hear me and I hope I can deliver this message with the same energy I did the first two times I tried doing it. <laughs> but uh, just going to talk about, you know, standing your ground with your clients. You know, you get a call from a client and uh, they tell you the address and you, the, 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 the neighborhood is familiar with you. With, you're familiar with it. You know it's a high-end neighborhood. You know uh, it's way above those those cheap $30 yards that, that you're used to doing. So, you know, you're looking at about 55, 60 bucks, you're kind of excited and you're on your way there. You get to the, you get to the neighborhood and it kind of confirms that yes, this is a high end neighborhood and I have the opportunity to make some money here. You, you call the customer, let them know you're out front or you knock on the door or whatever. He comes out, you guys walk the property and you give them the price and you tell them $45 for whatever reason. I don't know why you would lowball yourself, you know, ten fifteen dollars when you know that it's a sixty dollar yard it's a fifty five dollar yard yet you still tell them it's forty dollars just because you want to secure that yard and you want to get them you want to get them on the route just to say you got them on the route but you know we've all done it in the beginning you know trying to trying to grow in this in this industry we've all done it just trying to just trying to get more yards on the route you know but Keith Kalfish talks about it, man. And, and you know, you have to know your worth. You have to know your value. And and when you do, you cannot allow yourself to to, to be cheated. And you have to stick to your guns. Uh, he said it best in one of his, one of the videos. He's like, you're standing in front of this house, bigger than any house you've ever even been inside of, and you're afraid to tell the guy it's going to be you know fifty five, sixty five bucks. I mean, he's got a million dollars in cars in the driveway. He's got a you know half a million dollar boat backed up an RV. You know, they got a pool house bigger than your house, and you're afraid to tell them how much the price is. You have to stop doing that, and uh, you guys have to stick to your guns because there's no way, there's no way you're going to grow your business if you don't. You, you know, you're going to be stuck with that push mower for years and years and years if you don't. Uh, you'll never be able to get licensed. You'll never be able to get insured if you don't because uh, these things cost money. You know, you got to go beyond what it costs for you to live and pay pay your bills. You want your business to profit, and you want to make money. You're not cheating them. You're not getting over on these people because this is just the cost of doing business. If you go into any other successful business, um, even if it's service business, if it's a storefront, no matter what it is, these people know what their what their bottom line is. I mean, they they spend top dollar on teams to figure this stuff out. So when you walk into a store and there's a price tag on there, and there's a price on it, that price is not negotiable. It isn't. There's not even anybody for you to negotiate with. We have to operate our businesses in that same mentality. That our price is our price. There is no negotiation. And this is just what it costs in order for us to do business. And uh, you'll lose some customers, but re re reality, nine times out of ten, the customers that you want, the customers that you want, you know, because you're trying to grow a business, they'll pay it because they know your worth they're too busy to deal with their garden they're too busy to deal with their lawn and uh it's worth it to them to go ahead and just pay you the money and they don't have to worry about it you have to offer that that top product 
Um, so, you know, with that being said, just, just go ahead and go out there today, guys, and uh, you got some estimates. It's Monday. I know I usually do estimates on Monday. I've got a few today, and I've got a few, uh, a few yards to go cut, and um, I'm definitely gonna gonna push the issue. It's it's hard, it's hard, especially in the slow season, because like I said, you guys are desperate for money, and you just want to get that money and, and and get that job in the bag. But uh, you gotta you gotta stick to your guns, guys. But uh, I'm not gonna stay on here long. I gotta start bringing kids to school. I've already had to bring two to school. I got another one I'm about to get up and bring to school. That's the benefits. How many how many dads are there out there? That's the first thing I want to know. How many dads are out there? And I remember, I remember when I used to work a nine to five. I only had, I had we had three. We had three. We have four four boys now. But we had just got Andre, and he was just a baby. It's my third baby, and uh, you know, kids were going to school, and I had to go to work just before they had to go to school so I would miss them every morning every morning I couldn't wait so I started a business so that way I could make sure I could see my kids in the morning eat breakfast with them if I have to bring them to school you know just see them off before they start their day you know but uh that's really a big big thing with me you know spending time with my family when my family needs me I'm there no matter what's going on I don't care what kind of job I'm on uh, you know, and the, the downfall to that is, uh, you know, my kids get in a little trouble right here and there. They're, they're rebels. You know, they go to school, they talk back to the teachers. You know, nothing really, really bad, but, but you know, they get in a little trouble. And the disciplinary office and the principals and everything at their schools know that I'm self-employed. And they know if they call me that uh, I'm going to answer and I'm going to respond and I'll stop whatever I'm doing to come sit down in the office and listen to the principal tell me about what my boys have done. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's <laughs> I I see that as a blessing, and uh, and I really enjoy it. I mean, I know I know, you know, it's it's aggravating when your kids get in trouble, you know, but it's honestly a blessing to be able to respond because I remember being in school, and uh, my mom used to work overnight, and the teachers wouldn't even bother calling her because you know eight nine o'clock in the morning she was in dead sleep, and there's no way anybody was going to get her up. She wasn't going to get up and come to school. Not for no nonsense about me talking too much in class or I didn't do my homework or anything like that. Uh, what you say, Carl? You got two boys and two girls? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, same thing here. Yeah, same thing here. I got my oldest. He's out the door for 620. If he doesn't get out of the door for 620, he misses the bus, which he did this morning. And, and the thing is, I'm watching him and he knows. He knows that if he misses the bus, it ain't a big deal. It's, it's 620. He's making him a bowl of cereal. He hasn't even brushed his teeth yet. He's just lagging around the house, watching me trying to go live before. You know, it's it, it's it's crazy. And uh, you know, my second son, by the time I got back, he had already got on the bus. But I drove past the bus stop and just told him good morning and everything. And I'm on my way home, and I'm getting my youngest up to get ready for school. And uh, my third my third oldest, he's homeschooled, so he's gonna be home all day. But uh, it's truly a blessing to be able to do that, and. Uh, I enjoy it, but um, it's Monday, guys. It's the beginning of the week. The weather's great down here in Southeast Louisiana. I'm in Metairie. It's a little city just outside. It's a suburb just outside of the city of New Orleans. Uh, I think it's 65, almost 70 degrees now. We're expecting to reach temperatures to almost 80. Uh, I know a lot of you guys up north and out in you know Midwest, you guys are expecting or looking for snow. I'm not expecting snow, but I see you guys are gearing up your trucks for snow plows and buying salt and things like that. And I think that's awesome. Here, the grow season Ooh, excuse me. The grow season is beginning to slow down, you know, as far as grass cutting goes, but it's the holidays. A lot of people are wanting to get their flower beds cleaned up and uh get some mulching and things like that. So we're staying a little busy. Uh, generally, December and January is our slowest part of the year. Uh, I'll get on my marketing campaign. The beginning of February, we start pushing pushing a lot of new videos, a lot of new a lot of new content out for for customers um, via social media. I'm gonna have my website up running by spring, by 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 February for sure. And uh, I've got some big plans for this year. I know uh, I know a lot of you guys have some big plans. I'd love to hear what they are. I know I don't have a lot of viewers now, but if anybody watches the video, the replay or whatnot, uh, let us know what your plans are um, for the next season. 
you plan on getting some more equipment you have a new goal as far as how many clients you're gonna you're gonna do weekly and uh, any any new policies or anything like that you're gonna implement for me as far as policies goes I'm gonna put credit cards on file all my clients are gonna have credit cards on file because I'm tired of going back out every day um, so nine ten o'clock at night collecting payments it's really it's really exhausting and it's really a pain in my behind um, as far as the credit card on file thing goes I'm not you know your customer has the option you can either leave my payment for that service if you like in the same location you've always left it where we agreed on leaving it if it's not there I'm hitting the card uh, and I'm not just gonna hit it for that service I'm gonna go ahead and pay out the whole month so I don't have to worry about it anymore and you don't have to worry the customer doesn't have to worry about it anymore um, what are you guys thoughts on that that's something big that I think I'm gonna implement this this spring uh, as far as the websites going up, I have the website going. I think I'm gonna get Nick Saint to go ahead and help me with that. Uh, he's pretty good with with building websites, and he knows a lot about SEO work and things like that. Nick Saint's awesome about that, so I'm gonna see. I'm gonna get with him, and uh, we're gonna build a website this winter, and I'll get it up and running for spring, and hopefully that'll pull in a lot of work. My other goal is I want to pull in a few commercial pro properties. Um, I've already gotten up. I've already gotten the opportunity to uh, put in a bid on a couple of my church properties, and uh, I'll probably be doing those this spring as well. It's three of them, three really big properties, and uh, it's going to be a big thing for us. I've got a bunch of people who's uh, ready for spring that's ready to help me and uh, help work for the company and help it grow. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about the next season. and. Uh, that's it man I'm gonna get off of here I'm not gonna stay like I said I wasn't gonna stay on long I gotta get these kids to school make sure we can get some breakfast going I'm gonna go get me some coffee and uh, make my plan good morning to you too sexy I didn't know you were awake <laughs> let me get off of here guys and uh, I hope you guys start your week off awesome go out there and kill it and like I said man do not be afraid to tell these customers what you're worth and stick to your price. If they don't agree with your price, turn around, walk away, and go to the next client. It's just that simple. Um, stop cheating yourself. You guys looking on these videos, you're looking at all these other companies, they got the fancy equipment. They're doing, you know, they got they got awesome stuff. And uh, we're struggling with broke stuff. We're fixing our lawnmowers constantly. Yeah, let me get off of here because I'm going to start rambling, Carl. You have a great day too, buddy. I'm out.